Hi everybody, welcome back to PUBG on the PlayStation 4 and in this video um, I'm going to be showing you a solo chicken dinner uh, kind of walk through commentary there's nothing special about it but it has some of what I would say the foundations that you can put into place um, if you want to improve your chances of getting a chicken dinner and the kind of the first foundation is really where do you drop, how do you drop and for me kind of the rule is in solos anyway is you look at the flight path and then you pick somewhere far away for, as far away from the flight path uh, as you can get um, away from any of the named towns. Now this is the snow map Vikendi. Um, it's a bit bland now. Um, I probably sound like, like an old OG PUBG player but it used to be much more interesting when uh, in the old days before they before they changed. But anyway you know it's still it's still a map to play on as they so so the idea of, of this is that you get as far away as you can from the flight path um, so that when you land you can loot safely so you're not going to be bothered by other players you might bump into some bots I guess or something like that um, you can kind of start getting the loadout you want you know get your get your bag get your armor get your helmet get your AR or your submachine gun and then get your distance weapon and then the idea then is move into the circle um, Again, avoiding named areas, looting at smaller areas, and just playing the edge. Now, the kind of more advanced version of this is, is called D23E. Well, I've called it D23E. And if you've seen any of my previous chicken dinner walkthrough videos, of which there's quite a few on the channel, I'll talk about D23E. The way that you can take this um, this strategy a little bit further is is with D23 which is drive to the third circle and play the edge so if I was going to do D23 on this one I would fly along the roads away from the flight path and you look for a vehicle then you grab a vehicle then you drive away even further so you're looting up in complete safety and then you drive to the next circle then the next circle the next circle so, and then by the third circle that's when you uh, and you drive into the edge of the circle, that's when you abandon the car and you go the rest of the way on foot. Now, when I formulated D23E, it was really when the only two maps we had were Erengel um, and Miramar, obviously Miramar being even bigger, um, and it works reasonably well on those maps in most sorts of situations. You don't definitely don't need to do it on Sandhawk and you definitely don't need to do it on Karakin and you don't really need to do it on Vikendi as well so this is like D23 E light where I've just dropped down and then when I kind of looked at the um, the circle I can see I'm not too far away I want to make it easily on foot um, and I'm going to make my, make my way in that way now all I'm doing when I'm going into the circle is I'm just looting I'm just going via cover and I'm just looking around a lot and listening around a lot and what you're doing is as you're coming up to the edge of the circle that's when you want to slow down um, you want to be fairly quiet and you want to listen out and, and look out to see what happens so I've jumped forward a few minutes here and what's happened is I've heard a car pull up at that blue house and I've seen somebody round the back of it and this is a classic difference um, between PUBG um, or other battle royales and when you're playing a respawn multiplayer game because obviously there's no second chances in especially PUBG you know there's no you, you can't come back I mean if you're playing squads I guess someone could pick you up but then if you get killed you've had it but in solo there's nobody there to pick you up so when you get into a situation where you're thinking you're, you're gonna get into some sort of firefight if you can give yourself the advantage that means everything and if you're not sure whether you're going to have the advantage, you shouldn't push the fight. So what I'm doing here is I've just got my home, just got some cover, and you'll notice that the two guns I've got is I've got the Uzi submachine gun, and I've got the M24 bolt action rifle. Now the M24 is very powerful in the fact that it's a one-shot kill to the head, unless your opponent is wearing a level 3 helmet. In all other cases, if you hit them in the head, they'll be dead straight away, which is very, very powerful. The disadvantage with it is it's very slow firing. So what I'm trying to do here is just have a look round and just, just make it sure to see if I can see this guy. Because the, what the situation I'm looking for is where I can see the guy and he's still. And then I just line up the shot, pull the trigger, and he'll be dead. Now, as it is, he kind of keeps moving, he jumps in his car, and he drives off. But maybe in a in a respawn multiplayer, you, you would run down the hill, you would chuck a through, through chuck a few grenades, and you would force that firefight. 
but in PUBG, it's definitely best not to do that because he would hear you running down the hill probably he would get ready and you would turn what should have been an advantage into basically a 50 50 so you might as well just toss a coin so what i'm going to do now is nothing really much happens i'm going to jump forward and we're just going to go through the last 10 minutes of the chicken dinner and i'll talk about what i'm thinking about as we were uh, as we're going along um one more thing though i actually just noticed that i'm on the scent i'm on the edge of the circle i'm not pushing in to the circle i'm just playing the edge Okay, so we're down to the last 23 people alive. Um, I've got a little bit of a way to go, but as you can see, there's a couple of clusters of buildings between me and the next circle. And looking forward, you can see that there's uh, there's a lot of open ground. So what I'm thinking about here is, as I'm moving in, is is just people like to be where the buildings are. You know, they like to be in buildings, especially in solos, looking out of windows and things, or in third person mode, especially. Um, you can lie down and still look through the window or you can be to one side of the window and you can still look through it so I'm in a pretty exposed position so I'm trying to do my best by kind of sticking closer to the cliff face there um, trying to stick to the shadows in other places I'm constantly spinning the camera around just just kind of you know just to see if I can see anybody now as I'm coming up to the edge of the circle I'll start to slow down a bit now this is also where you really start listening out for the for gunfire and using that to help you gauge where enemies are specifically if there's someone near you remember in PUBG nobody appears on the minimap so sound is so 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 important now even if people are using suppressors so the sound is muffled and you're not sure it can give you a good idea and often what happens at this stage of the game is people have got probably got good weapons you know and they can be very tempted to start taking pot shots at each other um, and that is your well it's golden that is because you can listen out and you can say okay so someone fired from over there and if in like my case here where I've got like the M24 um, I can take advantage of that and as long as I'm careful you know I could see someone who's got another you know rifle who's firing at someone else and if I get the chance to kill them in one go I will take that I will take that shot now what's really important I think in solos is you should only take the shots if you really have to so you're being pushed by someone so they're threatening you so they're gonna kill you or you're definitely gonna get a kill because as I said before even if you have a suppressor on your gun as soon as you open fire you're giving your position away so although I might think I'm firing at someone across the field for me. There could be a guy who's literally hiding around the corner. He's in the corner. He's got his, he's got his, um, he's got his M16. He's got his G36 or whatever, and he's just waiting. Now, this car here <laughs> has obviously been parked by someone, and I can hear gunfire going off. And again, because I've got the M24, which is the one shot kill to the head, just like the Car 98 and the AWM. Um, and the is there Mosan Nagant? Does that do that now as well? I'm just looking down, thinking, where is this guy now? he's got a suppressed rifle so I can't exactly tell where he is but I'm just triangulating so what you can do in PUBG is if you just turn from left to right so that you, you know, you'll then be able to hear the rough direction that they're in and then you can look um, and also remember in PUBG it's very difficult to see people um, they can go behind cover they can hide in grass but what happens is the further away they are from you the grass stops rendering in <laughs> so although they think they're in grass they're not now because I was pretty sure there was a guy um, sort of there in that direction towards the car I'm just slowly backing off I can hear lots of gunfire off to my side so I'm just slowly crawling back now some people would say oh you're a snake in the grass you know how, how boring but for me playing PUBG the thrill is in the win the adrenaline is in the win doesn't matter if you get one kill doesn't matter if you get ten kills it's all about the win I mean, you could even win PUBG with no kills I've done that I think twice maybe Mm, with no kill wins so we're down to the last 10 now so in the last 10 I haven't even killed anybody yet um, I haven't even fired my gun but this is where the game for me really starts if you can follow this strategy of jumping far um, looting in safety and then coming into the circle on what we call the quiet side so you're away from any of the big name towns that really gives you ability to get into the top 10 and if you can consistently get yourself where you're in the top 10 
eventually you'll you, you'll get a chicken dinner honestly you'll win and you'll see the end of this one is so scrappy so so scrappy you know um because you know i haven't played pubg probably for i don't know two months <laughs> and, I, and i there was there's probably been about eight months before that when i or maybe even a year where i haven't been playing consistently because i've been playing other games um but you know by putting yourself in these top 10 situations you, you the, the luck will go your way one time and, and you'll get you'll get this win so again i've just moved in far enough to stay inside the next circle people can come through the blue the blue isn't as dangerous in pubg as it is in somewhere like warzone where you're dead in like 15 seconds you can stay out in the blue for quite a while now the circle's moved away from me here and there's an awful lot of cover now we're down to the last eight and i'm thinking where is the guy who was off to my left where is he you know he's got to be somewhere so i'm just looking around again i'm on the grass i'm locking that camera in with my shoulder button and just spinning around just so i can see because you what will happen is you'll just see this slight movement and you ah oh, there is somebody there now i do spot somebody in a sec now what i'm thinking about now is taking boosts so that i've got um healing over time but I ha i've only got two so i think maybe that's not a good idea and this is where i see that guy see him crawling through the grass there he is. So I know if I hit him in the head, he's only got a level 1 helmet, he's going to be dead. There you go. And then I move. I'm out of here. You know, I'm going for the safety of the circle. I've given away my position. There's no point hanging around. It would be suicide to loot him. You know, you never loot late game. You know, in a situation like that. Obviously, if someone's right next to you, which you see, I'm in a minute. I kind of do. So now we're moving in. I'm keeping an eye behind me because I'm thinking, is someone in that house? Still seven people left. People, people, you know, people know this strategy of waiting until the last minute. The circle moves really slow. You can outrun the circle, so so you don't want to get too far ahead. And what you'll see in a second is I see a guy on that rock in front of me there, and somehow I don't get a kill on him because actually I've just remembered because he's wearing a level three helmet so I managed to badly damage him now he knows where I am I haven't got any cover so this is where you use your molotovs molotovs are really good because the area of effect they spread around the rock and if you look closer you'll see he's actually on fire there we go he tries to uh, get me with a grenade throws it too far I then as soon as I'm behind cover I hit the deck now because I'm not in immediate danger I'm using my bandages you know i think i've only got a first one other first aid kit so i'm using my bandages and then the other thing i'll use i'll then use my painkiller to get myself up to full health bandages and first aid kits only get up to 75 percent and you've either got to have the you know the big meg kit the one that looks like a suitcase or you've got to use boosts like um uh painkillers and um, energy drink so now because i'm a bit low i go over and see what this guy's got so i take all his meds i take his six times scope because i prefer it than the eight times that i've got i stick his suppressor on my m24 and lo and behold there it is level three vest level three helmet now you might be saying rob that level three helmet is really really damaged and you're right it is very very damaged but remember what i said earlier i accidentally found my gun there the level three helmet is the only helmet that will protect you from an instant kill if you get hit in the head by a car 98 m24 awm or a mozan nagant so even if it's really really damaged you always take the level three helmet because even if it only has one health left on it it will still protect you from being killed instantly that's why it's so so important especially in solos with people so now i st now i'm starting to feel quite good because these two people they're having a little uh, fight between themselves and i've got my suppressor on my m24 as well so i'm thinking i'm gonna so i know there's two guys over there one of them just died so i know there's one guy in the distance so the question is where are the other ones where's the other guy three people left so i'm just crawling in i've got the circle i've got it i'm in the edge of the circle so i'm just gathering information here trying not to give away my position though they probably know i'm over here because of the sound of my rifle going off so i'm just looking around where is the next guy i know one right so they're firing each other they've got to be close to each other so i know both guys are on the other side of the circle we're down to the last two now this guy he's doing pretty well here he does pretty well because what he does is he pushes all the way around the circle um is it a good idea i don't know and i i lose him for a bit because he's going so far around the circle you know to kind of perhaps get behind me um 
and so what I do here is this is where we get out the throwables, we get out the molotovs so you can see how, how important I think molotovs are for area of effect so he, he's ducking and diving and um, I forget to reload my gun I forget to reload my gun this is why I'm s I run out of bullets he runs out of bullets <laughs> I reload and I kill him so the luck was on my side but you kind of saw the ideas there so anyway hope you found the video useful if you did hit like and see what the subscribe and I'll see you again soon